Well, here's here's what I think about that too. And I heard this a long time ago, and I kind of said, "Well, that's all great and wonderful, but I want to do service. <laughs> I want to get away from manufacturing." So early on, as an industrial engineer, I thought, "Well, we need the same industrial engineering practices in service companies. You know, when you manage something, you need that." So that's kind of where I went. But someone said that, like this to me, said that. Um, the only wealth of a nation comes from building something out of nothing. And you can't build wealth in a, con in a country without doing that. Everything else is just moving the wealth around. And every time you move something, there's friction, which means you get poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. So the only way you can build wealth in a nation is to create something out of nothing. Um, if, if, for example, let's take investment. That sounds like a good wealth building thing. Well, investment takes money from other people and shifts it into pockets of other people, but that's, that's what it does. It doesn't create anything. It does create capital to create things, but those things we're creating are probably built in China. And, um, and then if you look at, um, you know, for example, healthcare. Healthcare is that. 80% of all the companies, the healthcare companies are here in Nashville. Well, healthcare is needed and required, but you build sal there's salaries in, and there's products in, and there's all kinds of things going. Those products are produced somewhere else, and all the wealth is going that way, and the rest of the money is just being shifted around from people who need the service to the pockets of the professionals, which isn't a bad thing. It's just that you're not building wealth for a nation. I mean, you got to have the service, but you're still not building wealth for a nation. So you can have a, the wealth of a city like Nashville, but it's taking from other places, you know. So you got to have you got to have manufacturing, you got to have you know raw materials in order to build wealth, producing something out of them. Is that right? Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into Problems of bad coffee. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you my traumatic coffee experience. You want to hear my traumatic coffee experience? When I was in a high chair, I was in a restaurant. My dad owned a, a, a restaurant in Murfreesboro. And I literally was in a high chair in a restaurant. And I was, those rules were different then. So, you know, families actually worked together. And uh, and then later, my dad became a general manager of a Holiday Inn, and my mother was a general manager of a Holiday Inn. My dad died when I was 13. My mother took over. She was his, his assistant up to the point where he died, and then she became general manager. Uh, everybody in our family started working around the Holiday Inn in some way. So at age 11, I was working the front desk. Can you imagine that? So I actually had a switchboard. <laughs> you switch, I talk to people like so mad because they say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I say I'm not a ma'am. I'm a boy because <laughs> I was young, right? And um, well, anyway, I grew up and I and I got promoted to bus boy a as I got older, right? And I didn't get paid until I was like 16, but I worked a little bit all the way along the way. And as soon as I got 16, I was old enough to get paid. Okay, so I was probably before I was 16. And uh, and so I was um, making coffee because the waitresses need coffee. We had a full house in the restaurant in the Holiday Inn. There's over a hundred people, probably a hundred people there, just as many as you can put in that room. And they were running out of coffee left and right. So they assigned me not to bust tables, but to make coffee. So they showed me how to do it. You put this thing in, you put the coffee in, you put the filter in, put the coffee on top of that, and you plug it in this machine. You hit that button. It produces a pot of coffee, right? So I'm there, and I'm impatient because I want to produce this coffee. I want to do a great job. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting the coffee pot in, and I'm pushing that button, and I'm sitting over here just flicking that button, twiddling my thumbs, right? Little did I know that Lucille Ball probably found out this earlier, that every time you flick that, that switch, a pot of coffee was counted. So I had about 30 or 40 or 50 or 500 pots of coffee counted on that machine. It was old mechanical, probably not very electronic. So unplugging it didn't reboot it. And, <laughs> and, so, and so can you imagine what's happened? First thing I realize is happening is coffee starts overflowing. And so I'm 
pulling that out and trying to put another pot. We only have limited pots, and the and pour the pot of coffee out is one thing, and there's traffic going through. So my traumatic coffee experience was spending the rest of my night fixing this coffee machine and mopping up coffee and keeping it from overflowing, and that was pretty stressful for a young guy. Had school next day. So now, problem of bad coffee. You're sitting at the table, and you're complaining about the coffee. Now, you're the managers also, so what are you going to do about it? You're going to try to figure out what's the root cause of this problem. So traditionally, there's a bunch of ways to do this, but here's a, a good traditional way to think about it. It could be related to people. It could be related to the procedure or system. It could be related to equipment, or it could be related to materials. Okay? Maybe it could be related to materials by bad water, bad coffee, cheap filters, or bad cream. Can you imagine bad cream may make bad coffee? <laughs> if, uh, that could be the problem, right? Cheap filters may let a lot of stuff through. Bad coffee in general just may be stale, maybe, right? Could be related to people, poor training, or lack of cooperation. Could be related to uh, equipment by dirty pots, dirty baskets. Could be related to procedures by the wrong procedures. Uh, too much or too little water, too much or too little coffee, you know, a whole bunch of ways. And if you, anything you do, anything you see, you can replace bad coffee with one of those examples, right? Okay. In my case, what was the problem? Training. Now, would you treat a poorly trained person the same way you, pe do you treat uh, lack of cooperation? No. I mean, this is a counseling problem. This is a training problem. There's two different things, right? Did I need counseling? Yeah. Uh, probably after that experience, I did. <laughs> it took years to get over it. <laughs> I don't drink coffee to this day. No, but I didn't need counseling because I was enthusiastic. And I was working without pay, and I was wanting to make a good... Matter of fact, I was working for a share of the, of the tips, if you can imagine that. And, and I was young, and I didn't care, and, it was, and I had to do something. And if, if you said you were bored around my house, you, we were given something to do. And so it sure beat, and it didn't have video games then. So we had Pong. <laughs> it was exciting. You should have been there. Um, you, <laughs> you were there? <laughs> pong, yeah, you know, it's the, the little ping pong paddles go. Little, little <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, that was that was it, and we didn't play a lot. I mean, I, we had video games when I was in college, and kids would spend their whole time there. But I never got into it, so I didn't have that problem. I had other problems, <laughs> but. Um, so anyway, related procedures. So that's just a typical way of going about trying to find the root cause. Now, once you find it, did you solve the problem? No, but you're going along the way to solve the problem. If you know, well, here's what happened. Craig wasn't trained on how to do this. <laughs> Matter of fact, there should have been a warning label. I could have sued right now, you know, the climate we had today. There should have been a warning label on that. It, well, it's hot coffee. <laughs> you know, it is hot going out and spilling all over the floor, and the floor is tile, so it's slippery and everything. You didn't have to replace the actual coffee, so Well, I was trying to serve people at the same time. So here, here's, what the, here's what the drill was. You had to find out what good looked like on the coffee pot, and then you had to change the filter and put the coffee pot in while the water's running hot. <laughs> And so that the coffee pot would fill up to the point, pull it out, change it with another coffee pot, get this one ready for the waitresses, and there's a limited number of pot coffee pots. So you had to do all this at the same time you're trying to do everything else. So it became a lot more challenging than it had to be. <laughs> That's right. It, it, and it just reminded me of Lucy Ball movie.